Hello viewers, so welcome back to the course on matrix computation and its application. So today in this lecture we are going to discuss uh, very important results based on the uh, linear algebra. So in the previous lectures we have seen that for a given matrix A of m cross n dimension, then we have seen that this matrix is associated with four subspaces and these subspaces we can make like this one. So, this is I will let you know that why we are making of this type and the common point is the just one point it is intersecting and another one I can represent the same way. Maybe I can write like this one. So, these are the four spaces that is associated with this one. Now, I know the matrix A can be written as a linear transformation. So, it is the, so this I write column space of A and this is also we write as a range space of A. So, I can write the range space of A as a column space of A. Now, this is I know that the null space of A transpose. Now, this one I write the null space of A and this is I am writing the row space of A or uh, then this is also equal to I can write as null space of sorry the range space of the range of A transpose. So, I can write this as a in the short form row of A. So, it is a row space of A and the point of intersection is this one. So, we are going to show that these subspaces are orthogonal to each other and we are also showing here because this is a, a matrix is from uh, of dimension m cross n. So, it goes m cross n is a linear transformation from R n to R m. So, if I know that if it is a row space the range is R, so that the rank of A and this is null t. So, suppose this is null t, then I know that the, the dimension, so maybe I can write not like this one. So, I can write here that let rank of A is equal to R and that is also equal to rank of A transpose and suppose nullity of A is some P then I know that R plus P R plus P that is equal to N that is a rank nullity theorem. Okay. So, if uh, I can say that if the, the dimension of this one is this one, so it is if it is rank is R then it is rank is R then this is of dimension m minus r and null t will be of dimension n minus r because this is a r. So, this is basically r m and this is basically r m. So, that thing we know from this uh, transformation. Now, from here we want to show a very important result 
is that so the first result I want to the first one is the null space of A is perpendicular is orthogonal to row space of A. So, we can write uh, that is the null space of A is perpendicular to the row space of A and the row space of A I can write as uh, the range space of A transformation. So, this is the first one. Second one is that the column space of A that is I can write. So, the column space of A is orthogonal to null space of A transpose here. So, it means that column space of A is perpendicular to the null space of A transformation. So, these are the two results we want to discuss here. Now, so for this one I just want to write a definition two subspaces say S and T. So, two subspaces that is S and T are said to be orthogonal to each other if every element of S is orthogonal to every element of T. Then only we can say that these are orthogonal. So, in this case we know that these are the subspaces because null space is a subspace or row space is a subspace. So, these subspaces are orthogonal to each other means each and every element of null space is orthogonal to each and every element of row space. Similar case is here. So, let us prove this one. Proof of the previous first. So, this is first I want to discuss that the null space of A is orthogonal to the row space of A. Now, let suppose we have A x equal to 0. So, this is my A that is m cross n. Okay. So, this is I know that this is A is m cross n and x is n cross 1. So, that is equal to 0. So, if it, this is equal to 0, it implies that x belongs to null space of A because it is going here. Now, now we have A x equal to 0, this is we have. So, A is basically if I write the A, if you see from here, then this is R 1, this is R 2, R n and this is my x. So, it is x 1, x 2, x n because x is coming from n cross 1. So, nth dimension and this is m cross n. So, m number of rows and n number of columns that is equal to the vector 0 0 0. Now, if you see from here then what I am doing is that we are multiplying this vector with the first row of the matrix 
and we are getting 0. So from here if you see that I can write from here that R1 dot product with x because this is my uh, row vector and this is my column vector and I am taking the dot product that is equal to 0 or maybe I can write this as directly the matrix form. So, I can write R x that is equal to 0 because it is a row and the column. So, it is just the matrix form I can write. Also R 2 x that is 0, R 3 x that is 0 and R n the last one. So, this is my m because we have a n number of rows. So, it is go up to m. So, that is equal to 0. So, from here you can see from here that I can say that the r 1 is orthogonal to x, r 2 is orthogonal to x, r 3 is orthogonal to x and so on, r m is orthogonal to x. So, all these rows are orthogonal to the vector and this vector lying in the null space of A. Now, we are able to see this one, but as we have seen there that we are able to tell that two uh, subspaces are orthogonal to each other only if the each element is orthogonal to the each element of the other subspace. Now, so let us take any element. Now, for any element in the row space of A. So, if I take any element in the row space of A, that element will be spanned by the rows. So, that element will be a linear combination of the rows. So, if any now for any element in the row A is written as can be written as C 1 R 1 plus C 2 R 2 C M R N because it will be the linear combination of this rows. Now, I take this element, it can be any element and I am taking the dot product with x. Now, from the definition of the dot product, I know that this will be equal to C 1 R 1 taking the dot product plus C 2 R 2 taking the dot product and C m R m taking the dot product. And this value we already know that this is equal to 0, 0, 0. So, that is equal to 0. So, from here I am able to see that any element from the row space taking the dot product with any element x from the null space is giving this value 0. So, which implies that every element in row space of matrix A is orthogonal to every element in null space of A. So, which implies that the null space of A is orthogonal to a row space of A. So, this is one of the important result and from here you can see that the common element will be only the 0 element that will be lying in both the subspaces because it is a subspaces. So, 0 element will also lie in the Na and 0 element is also lying in row space of A. So, that is why in here we are writing this connecting with the point. So, this is the 0 element, 0 element of Rn. 
So, that is the 0 element of R m or maybe I can write it with some another color maybe I will. So, N A of dimension n minus r and this point is 0 element of r n. Similarly, this is also 0 element of R m. So, they are they have only one point common to each other that is just the 0 element of this one. So, we are able to uh, prove the first part of this one. The second part is the column space of A is orthogonal to null space of A transpose. So, second one we need to show that the column space of A is perpendicular to the null space of A transpose because both are lying in the R m, they are the subspaces of R m and N A and rho space are the subspaces of R n. So, this one we want to show. Now, it can be clearly proved that now for any system A x equal to 0. So, that was just now we have proved. Now, we can take transpose of matrix A. So, that is A transpose. So, I will not take this system. Now, we take the transpose of the matrix. Then A transpose Y then let I take the system a transpose y equal to 0. Now, from here it implies that y belongs to the null space of A transpose and also rho space of A transpose is perpendicular to the null space of A transpose. The just now we have uh, showed that in the previous one that the rho space of A is perpendicular to the null space of A. So, the null space of A transpose is perpendicular to rho space of A transpose and also we know that rho space of A transpose is same as column space of A because I have just taking the rows as a column in the transpose. So, rho space of A transpose that will be same as the column spo space of A. So, which implies that null space of A transpose is orthogonal to column space of A. So, they are also orthogonal to each other and then the point of common intersection is only the 0 element. So, this is the results we want to show. Now, one more thing we want to discuss about. So, now we want to discuss about the matrix. Suppose we have a m cross n dimension, then we want to discuss about a transpose a, this matrix. Because in this case, we what we are doing that suppose I have a matrix A. So, A matrix is basically rho 1, rho 2, rho m 
that is m cross n. Then if you see from here A transpose A is basically now the first row will become the column, R2 will become column and Rm this one. So, I can write this as R1 transpose or maybe I can write here if R is the row then it will be column. So, I can write here R1 transpose, R2 transpose and R m transpose. So, if it is of m cross n dimension this will be n cross m dimension. So, basically this will be A transpose. So, if A this one the A transpose will be this one. So, basically I can write this as directly from here no need to write this. So, this is my A transpose. So, from here if I want to write A transpose A. So, what we are doing here is that I am taking my R 1, R 2, R m and this is R 1, R 2, R m. So, this is my A transpose A. It means that I am multiplying, I am taking the dot product of each and every rows of the given matrix. So, now I want to discuss about some properties of A transpose A. So, properties of A transpose A. So, first thing is that A transpose A is a square matrix. always because if A is a, A transpose will be n cross m and A is m cross n. So, it means that A transpose A will be n cross n. So, that is always square matrix. Second thing is that A transpose A is a symmetric matrix. Here we are taking all the uh, real valued spaces. So, that is why we are dealing with the transpose only. So, it is a symmetric matrix because A transpose A I can write transpose. So, this is A transpose A transpose. So, this is A transpose A. And third one is we have already discussed that A transpose A is positive definite matrix. So, it is very difficult to, uh, to construct a positive definite matrix, but if any matrix is there we can write A transpose A is a positive definite matrix and we have uh, proved this earlier also. So, positive definite matrix means all eigen values are positive. Now, how we can uh, show this one? So, this one I can write let I write the so A transpose A if I take x that is equal to lambda x and from here I can write that I just multiply by x transpose. So, A transpose x x can be written as x transpose lambda x where lambda is the Eigen value and from here I can write that lambda will be x transpose A transpose x 
x transpose x. Now, x is a vector. So, x belongs to R n. So, I know that this can be written as x transpose over square because this is just the the magnitude square of the of the, of the vector x. Now, from here I can write this lambda can be written as again I can write this as a x transpose because if I take the transpose it will be x transpose a transpose and then I can write from here this is not x it is a a it is a it is a. <coughs> so, I can write this as a a x. Now, we know that this a x is again the vector. So, this can be written as I can write this as a a x the magnitude square this one and this is the magnitude or the norm square. So, this is always greater than or equal to 0. So, from here you can see that so, which implies that lambda is always greater than or equal to 0. So, it is positive definite. So, it is it will be the positive definite matrix and this will be 0 only when this part A x equal to 0 otherwise this is never equal to 0. So, after showing this that this is a positive definite we want to discuss another important result. So, this is the uh, third property. So, the fourth property I want to discuss is that the null space of A transpose A is also equal to null space of A. That is I want to discuss this. So, this one I want to discuss because null space of A is a subspace of R n and this is also A transpose A is a n cross n matrix. So, null space of A is also of the dimension uh, subspace of R n. So, I want to discuss that this is the equal. So, let us do that one. Now, let we take. So, let us take A transpose A x equal to 0. or maybe I just take let us let us assume x belongs to null space of A transpose A which implies that A transpose A x is equal to 0. This one I can write as A transpose A x equal to 0 and from here I can write that if A transpose A x equal to 0 which implies that A x belongs to null space of A transpose. Now, so this is a belongs to the null space of A transpose. Also, also we know that Also, we know that A x belongs to column space of A because A x is just what is that? It is the the span of the columns of A. So, it belongs to the column space of A, but so this is also belongs to column space A and this is also belongs to the null, null space of A transpose, but 
null space of A transpose, just now we have seen that it is orthogonal to the column space of A. This is we have seen. So, which implies that, so now A x also belongs to the null space, A x also belongs to this one, but this is orthogonal to each other. So, orthogonal to each other and the common point is only 0, which implies that my A x should be equal to 0, because only intersection point is the, the 0 of that space. So, that we have seen. So, which implies it should be 0 and from here I can write that the x belongs to the null space of A. So, that implies that I have taken the element from the null space of A transpose A and I showed that this belongs to the null space of A. So, it is a subspace of this one, subset of null space of A. Now, we can go directly the converse also. So, conversely very easily we can do that we take the element from N A and going the same way. So, conversely we can show that null space of A is a subspace of null space of A transpose A. The same way I will take the element from this, I will reach here, then from here I will reach here and we will go back from here. So, from these two we can show that the null space of A transpose A that is equal to the null space of A. Also, so after doing this one, so null space of A and null space of A transpose. So, from here I can say that nullity of A transpose A is same as nullity of A. This is we are able to make from this. Uh, now, so after doing this one, I want to, so this is the fourth property. So, I want to discuss the fifth property. So, the fifth property is that the rank of A transpose A is same as rank of A. This one I want to discuss. Now, we know that since Now, we know that this A is m cross n and A transpose A is n cross n. Now, using rank nullity theorem, I can say that the rank of A plus rank uh, plus nullity of A is equal to n. Also, rank of A transpose A plus nullity of A transpose A that is also equal to n because A transpose is n cross n dimension. So, it is a subspace of R n. So, the rank will be uh, rank of A transpose A plus nullity of A transpose A that is also n. Now, from here from these two, but nullity of A transpose A is same as nullity of A that uh, we have seen here. So, if I have these things and this is all n n, so which implies that a rank of A transpose A is equal to a rank of A. So, this one can be proved by this way. So, it means the nullity 
of A transpose A is same and the rank of A transpose A is same. Now, so after doing this one, one thing we also uh, discuss is that now we want to discuss that this A transpose A is a square matrix, then we want to discuss that when this matrix is invertible. So, this one we want to discuss because it is a square matrix and we found that the rank of A transpose is equal to the rank of A, then how we can say that this matrix is invertible or not. So, uh, so this one we can uh, find out that when we can say that this matrix is invertible. Now, so let us take example. So, this will see uh, with the help of example. Let us we take the example. Now, suppose I take a matrix A having suppose I it having two columns. So, let us take the example I take 1, uh, 1, 1 and another is 1 minus 1, 2. So, this one I am taking. So, this matrix I am taken, uh, I have taken here. Now, if you see from here, then these vectors, so first column, the second columns are uh, linearly independent to each other. So, I can say from here that rank of A is 2 in this case, because the first column and the second column are linearly independent to each other that we can verify very easily that this vector cannot be written as a scalar multiple of this vector. So, in this case the rank of A is 2. Now, if I take A transpose A, so this will be 1, 1, 1, 1 minus 1, 2 and this will be 1 minus 1, 2. Now, from here we know that A transpose A is just taking the dot product of the rows with the all the rows. So, this is first with first, so it is 3. Now, I am taking this with the second one, second row. So, I am taking 1 minus 1, 2, so it will be 2. <coughs> then this is again 2 and this one I am taking 1 plus 1, 2 plus 4, 6. And this is of course, 2 cross 2 and also we know that rank of A transpose A here, if you see from here, this is coming to because they are not uh, uh, scalar multiple of each other. It is 3, 2, it is 2, 6. So, if I multiply by 3 here, so I cannot get second row with the first row and also from the previous uh, this one I know that the rank of this is equal to this. So, it is a full rank. So, now from here I can say that this is a 2 cross 2 matrix and rank is 2. So, from here I can say that the matrix A transpose A is invertible. So, I can take the inverse of this one. Now, if I take the matrix A as 1, 1, 1 and I take 2, 2, 2. So, in this case I know that the first, the second column is 2 times the first column and from here if I solve this one in the echelon form, then I can find that the rank of matrix A is just 1. So, in this case it is just rank is 1. And now, if I take the A transpose A, so this will become because I am just multiplying its row. So, it is 3, then it will be 6, 
it will be 6 and this will be 4 plus 4 plus 4 it is 12 and you can see from here I can write this as 3 6 and just it is a 2 times of 3 and 2 times of 6 and now the rank of A transpose A in this case is 1. So, from here I can say that A transpose A is not invertible. So, when the given columns are linearly independent then A transpose A is invertible and when they are linearly dependent then the corresponding A transpose A is not invertible. So, that things we have to uh, keep in mind. So, uh, let us stop here. So, in uh, today's lecture we have discussed about that the four subspaces associated with the given matrix they are orthogonal in the sense that we have shown that the null space of matrix A is orthogonal to the row space of the matrix A and the null space of A transpose is orthogonal to the, the column space of the matrix A. And then we have discussed the another important matrix that is A transpose A and discuss its uh, few properties. In the next lecture we are going to use these properties to discuss a least square solution. So, uh, thanks for watching, thanks very much. Okay.